Hi Cross Flats. So I have got a book to read to you today and I thought I would move away from um, story books and go with a um, non-fiction book today. So this is a really lovely book um, called Amazing Animal Babies um, and one of the people who wrote it is Chris Packham and you may or may not know who he is but when I was younger he did this really amazing program called The Really Wild Show um, and it was so good. He has so much knowledge about animals. He's a really um, interesting man. Um, I think he does some programs now as well but um, yeah he's really good and he's written this um, this book which I really enjoyed so I thought I would share it with you. So, every day, let me just move this, sorry, every day hundreds of thousands of human babies are born around the world just as you were and at the same time billions, it's a big number, billions of other animals are also starting their lives not all in quite the same way that you did. Most mammals, such as orangutans and humans, grow inside their mother and suckle milk when they are born. Other animals hatch from hard or soft shelled eggs. So you think that's birds, but it's not always birds that hatch from eggs. Unlike humans, many fish and insects produce huge numbers of eggs in one go like the soccer of salmon. And for a few type of animals, such as the seahorse, it is the male rather than the female who give birth to the young. Some baby animals are looked after by their parents or family group for many years as they grow up, like the elephant and the calf, while others have to fend for themselves as soon as they are born, like the stick insect. Would you like to meet some more amazing baby animals? Darwin's frogs. So Darwin's frogs live in the forest streams in Chile and Argentina. After the female has laid her eggs, the male guards them, gulping them up when they start moving and keeping them safely in his mouth. The eggs hatch into tiny tadpoles after a few days. Once they have grown into hopping froglets, the adult male spits them out into the big wide world. That's interesting, isn't it? However, not all parents take such good care of their offspring. On an island in Indonesia lurks the largest lizard in the world, the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon is so big that it can eat deer and even humans, but the adults may also eat their own babies. To avoid being gobbled up by their parents, young Komodo dragons climb nearby trees as the adults are too heavy to climb after them. They don't risk coming down until they are at least two years old, so they spend two years living in trees to avoid being eaten by their mums and dads. And we think we have it hard at home, guys. To stop their parents eating them, the babies also roll in the stinky stomachs of dead animals. Black-footed albatross chicks from Hawaii also have to be extremely brave at an early age. At just five months old, these seabirds head for the ocean. They will spend most of their lives swooping above the water. Young birds that have just learnt to fly are called fledglings. The chicks aren't able to fly very well at first and have to watch out for cunning tiger sharks who know that the tired fledglings will land on the waves to rest. There's a tiger shark. One in ten albatross chicks ends up in the growling tummy of a shark. Poor chicks. Tiger cubs need up to two years with their mother to learn how to hunt and survive. If cubs are orphaned from six months, they may still have a chance of reaching adulthood, but they have to rely on these natural qualities. Their night vision ena enables them to hunt in low light. Their claws and teeth are perfect weapons for grasping and killing prey, and their stripes help them to hide in the grasslands and forests. Oh, one creature that needs its coat for more than just hiding is the polar bear. Temperatures in the Arctic can drop up below 60 centigrade, degrees centigrade. Brrr. 
Cubs are born in underground snow dens and grow long thick fur with a thick woolly undercoat to keep them cosy. Their paws even have furry undersides. Cubs stay with their mother for about two and a half years. And I know from our project this year, year two, that you only find polar bears in the South Pole and you only find penguins in the North Pole. And the South Pole, where polar bears live, gets a lot colder than the North Pole, where penguins live. Cobras live in Africa, Australia and Southern Asia. These cold-blooded animals need heat from their surroundings to keep warm. Cobras lay their eggs in a nest to keep them toasty. Eggs are laid somewhere warm. An egg tooth on its snout helps the baby hatch. So it has a special tooth when it's a baby to help it get out of its egg. A newborn cobra has to look after itself. And baby cobras can defend themselves with a poisonous bite, just like the adults. A baby cobra may be just a fraction of the size of an adult when it hatches. A young king cobra has enough venom, that's poison, in one bite to fit, kill a full-grown elephant. So you don't want to cross with a, um, with a baby cobra even. The venom comes from fangs in the cobra's mouth. When threatened, the cobra shows its hood. Most cobras eat small creatures such as rats, birds, and lizards. Ooh, is that an unusual animal? Rats! Rats can be very common and are eaten by many animals, so they spend a lot of time underground. But they come at, out at night to look for food. Although baby rats don't open their eyes until they leave the nest at two weeks old, Scientists have discovered that their sense of direction is already almost as good as their parents. Unlike rats, we aren't able to recognise and remember our world until we are about six months old. So as soon as rats are born, they have a good sense of direction and recognise their world and where they are, their surroundings. Oh, here is an animal which you too should know well. The sun-scorched deserts of southern Africa are home to meerkat. They also live underground where it is cooler. The pups love eating scorpions, but their sting can be deadly. So adults bring pups dead scorpions to practice with before they make their first kill. The pups also eat juicy worms and other small creatures. When pups move on to live scorpions, they must strike quickly and bite off the singer just to be safe. They also have to dodge the scorpion's powerful pincers. Worms. There are over 3,000 species of earthworm. Who knew? The longest measuring over 7 metres is found in South Africa. 7 metres, that's really long for a worm. However, you can see smaller ones in your garden. Some worms are ready to lay their own eggs after just 10 weeks. After they emerge from their own silky cocoons as babies. Each worm is both male and female at the same time, so you don't get boy, ma uh, boy worms and girl worms. They're boys and girls at the same time, and they are known as hermaphrodites. As you have seen, the world is full of amazing baby animals, and many are growing up in your neighbourhood, so you can be a part of their magical lives. Just like you, each animal is a unique individual with a story to tell. Baby earthworms hatch from cocoons that are smaller than a grain of rice. It's very small. And then you've got some more facts about animals. So I hope you enjoyed that book, um, Cross Flap. It was, um, I really enjoyed it and I've learned some things there. So you're never too old to stop learning. Um, and I just thought it'd be different from another story. So yeah, hope you're all doing well and staying safe. And uh, see you soon.